I'm kicking off the session today to tell you about a review ABARES has undertaken of industry efforts to better understand community perceptions to food and fibre. We did this by um, through discussions with research and development corporations and other associated agricultural peak bodies during the last few months. The context for what I'm talking to you about today is um, that the operating environment is changing. Uh, for, for some industries more than others, obviously forestry has been dealing with social acceptability issues for many decades, but as we're aware, recently there's been a number of high profile public outcries uh, around agriculture. Um, issues such as the super trawler that won't go away, as I heard from somebody over coffee from the fisheries industry yesterday, and the suspension on live export in 2011. Not only does it appear that the community is becoming more concerned about what they're eating um, and, and wearing, but the operating environment has changed in terms of communication technology. So information's becoming instantly available, everything's public, and these days everybody, if they want to, can be an, a public opinion leader. We asked the industry what issues were they dealing with, and we've come up with these four categories that um, are shown here. But it's important to mention that price, quality, and taste are still the attributes that are most important to consumers, and um, by implication, the rest of the supply chain. So these, what are often called ethical attributes, are only a small picture in terms of what's, um, uh, what's selling agricultural produce. Nevertheless, these issues are important um, to some sectors of the community. So animal welfare, as we're aware, there's been a lot more uh, attention given to this by public and media recently, a range of issues um, concerning animal husbandry, housing and transport. One study showed that um, the community in terms of animals is most concerned with laying hens followed by pigs. Environmental sustainability is another issue. Things like fisheries, uh, sustainability of fish, fish stocks, um, fisheries bycatch, old growth forests, but also soil erosion, and water resources are coming up as social acceptability issues uh, for some segments of the industry. Human health and nutritional issues are also being seen as social acceptability issues, um, differentiated from food safety issues in that they are, they are quite hard to measure perceptions of what people think are in their food. Um, so things, concerns like uh, antibiotics in food, um, GMOs, etc. So we asked the industries which, what sort of research they were doing, and we um, have categorised it in these four categories. So a large part of the research is market research, so market and consumer research, trying to understand what consumers are um, buying, what they're saying that they would buy, uh, what sort of attitudes they have um, to their to products. Much of this is confidential information. Um, it, it sort of includes information like what sort of terms are, people, are, are seen as acceptable. And one study showed that the term um, outdoor raised is a preferable term to the term access to, uh, sorry, access to outside during the day. So it's all about finding out what term, not only what practices are acceptable, but how we describe these practices. The second body of research uh, is what we're calling community research. This is wider public research that's trying to understand information beyond market research. Uh, so, so general community attitudes and perceptions. Uh, there's a body of research which is looking at what practices producers are, are doing, so producer-focused research, which might look at things like stockmanship skills in, in relation to animal welfare conditions, um, it might look at, uh, for grain growers, for example, uh, attitudes towards and use of GM seeds. And finally, um, in terms of the livestock industries, there's a large body of work looking into animal welfare, uh, animal welfare measures, animal psychology, animal, animal well-being, which includes uh, studies looking at the interaction between animals and humans um, in, in their uh, husbandry conditions. 
So just dipping the toe into some of those uh, findings of the, the research that we looked at. Um, here's an example of community-based research, which is asking uh, to what degree the community thinks the fishing industry is sustainable. And as you can see, there's a slight increase uh, between 2011 and 2013 of the segment of the community that says, yes, fishing is sustainable. Um, some, of the, some of the research is looking into um, how people view the products, and here's a study by the forestry industry that looks at the comparability of uh, wood as a product in terms of sustainability compared to other materials. And as I said, market research is a, is a core business of understanding um, social acceptability issues, and we can see as we, uh, as we know that free-range eggs... Uh, the sale of free orange eggs has increased from 8% in 2002 to around 38% in 2013. So the research is being used in a variety of different ways. Uh, one of the key ways is in, in terms of marketing and communication strategies. So TV and online <coughs> newsprint campaigns, often efforts to engage the community and consumers to, uh, into a better understanding of what is actually happening on farm or, or indeed other parts of the supply chain. And Isabel is obviously going to talk to you about Dairy Australia's efforts in, in that area. Um, there's varied responses. I'm not going to go through all of these uh, ways that the research is being used. There's varied responses across different industries. Some industries are using this to inform social, to li social license to operate strategies um, but generally, the, the information that's being collected is, is being used to help align community and industry. Um, and the quote that we've got here is that this information is being really used to, um, to engage with community to avoid regulatory and political interventions. There's a lot of challenges in this space. One of the, this quote, I think, really, from one of our participants, um, from an RDC really describes the challenge that is being faced in this area. And the challenge is, is it the practice that needs amending or, or working on, or is it the understanding and knowledge of the practice that needs a focus? And really, there is, there is quite a lot of debate, and um, it's, it's really an area for better understanding between community and industry about this very issue. So just expanding on what we found as three key challenges for the industry, really the challenges in better understanding and responding to community expectations. Uh, the first one um, has ac actually already come up a few times at the Outlook conference that came up yesterday in the productivity session, is that we're already facing um, issues with productivity and a very challenging environment with productivity. So with increased community expectations, how does the industry uh, ha m try to meet those whilst all already in a constrained environment? Um, and I'm going to talk about that in the next slide. Another major challenge is understanding the influence and role of different mechanisms that are actually going to help here. Mechanisms that are going to help industry uh, respond in, in, to these community expectations in whatever, whatever form that response might take. And as I said, it may be just a communication response. And I'm also going to talk about that. And the third issue is really understanding who it is um, that, we, that industry needs to engage with and how. So consumer information is not necessarily going to satisfy um, information needs around the wider community. So attitudes that may, may not actually be getting into the supermarket may actually be influencing the wider environment, such as government and retailers. So it's really important to know what the wider community is thinking, um, not, just, not just what your market is doing. And obviously we've got Jackie. Um, from Coles, who's going to talk to us more about that. So just going back to the issue about sustaining industry productivity and competitiveness whilst also meeting uh, consumer expectations, that, or responding to them, I should say, and that some of them can't necessarily be met. Um, this is a framework that um, is quite popular amongst some of the RDCs in explaining innov innovation in terms of the ability to respond and... Uh, um, to community expectations. 
So what we were told was that there are a few players in the industry, and I'm talking across the whole supply chain, who don't necessarily believe social licence to operate is an issue. Um, so in this, in this framework there, um, in the reactive area. Most of the players, we're told, um, sit in the proactive area. So they are taking the pulse of the community that they're, they're supplying to, and they are um, proactively responding to it. And there are a few that are really pushing the barrow and developing new business models um, in, in terms of the, those that sit in the innovative category who are not only understanding these expectations but taking advantage of them and, and creating new markets. But what we're told is that whilst most, as I said, uh, of the industry players are well above what might be considered minimum standards and certainly um, above regulations, they, there's, a, there's a sense that there's an upward pressure which we don't know when it's going to stop. And so there's a sense of pressure on industry that uh, even, the, even the innovative uh, players in the industry uh, are finding challenging. So generally there was a sense that it, it, it's an issue which we can't quite measure the length of where it's going to end. As I mentioned, it's important to understand what's actually driving this. And we asked, using uh, a, a framework by Neil Gunningham from the ANU, um, which, which were the major drivers of um, industries responding to community expectations. And we were told, basically, in the large part, it's economics. So that is whether the product is going to be, uh, they're going to be able to sell their product or whether they're, they're going to be able to sell products with some premium, et cetera. That's the, uh, the, key, the key factor that's driving the, um, the uh, people's responsiveness to this area. And a second one is reputation. So reputation obviously is linked with the ability to earn an income from your product, but it's also about being able to sit down with the community, um, with trust between you, so that you can actually have the sort of conversations that need to be have, had about these fairly complex issues. So reputation is a second important driver. Um, legal uh, mechanisms and regulations are really not the driver at this stage, which is a good thing because they're costly. So in summary, uh, we found there's, uh, industry is doing a lot in this area. There are um, some really great bits of research going on. We see areas, the possibility is for e expansion is in these four areas that I've got here. So one is more of this wider community uh, research that goes beyond market research. Um, secondly, participatory research. So actually one of the suggestions was uh, community juries where industry and community sit down and work out what is acceptable ar around industry practices rather than a reliance on experts. Um, social factors research, age, education, um, income and gender are all factors that place us on the um, spectrum of activism. So we need to really understand who it is that um, we're talking to when we're communicating some of these issues. And finally, um, working with community to develop a joint vision for what um, farming, fishing and um, forestry looks like. Thank you very much for your attention. Good afternoon. <laughs>